and welcome to Inside Healthcare. There is good news on the COVID-19 front. More than 2.8 million people here in Minnesota have already received their vaccine, and more than half of them are fully vaccinated. I am personally excited that I'm scheduled to get my vaccine in just five days. So like many of you, I'm anxious to resume normal activities after more than a year of COVID-19, but doctors say, Take it easy. They're seeing patients with sprains, pulled muscles, and lots of other spring-type injuries. Joining us by Zoom is Dr. Christy Trussell, Assistant Medical Director with the Urgency Room, to tell us what kinds of injuries she has seen and advice on ways to prevent them. Every spring, we see kind of an uptick in these in in these uh, in these injuries. Things that we see a lot of are slips and falls, or you know, running, jumping, playing, and you know, falling. We, um, I've seen a couple of folks already this year with uh, with broken wrists when they were out running and playing and fell and landed on their with their arm out in front of them. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly we see every year as kids get their bikes out and return to the playgrounds, injuries related to those things. And among that, with all those activities, you want to make sure that they're protecting their head. I mean, the sprains and the broken mm -hmm. things are one thing, but, you know, you want to protect those more serious injuries. Yeah, so certainly, certainly concussion has been kind of top of the mind as far as sports injuries the last the last several years. Wearing a good high quality bike helmet whenever you're biking, not only biking, but also scootering, rollerblading, uh, roller skating, or even if you have a, you know, a younger child in one of the bike carriers or on or on a bike, uh, like a little bike seat with you, it's important that they're, they're also wearing wearing a helmet as well. You know, I'm um, covering the health beat for years. Um, I know that injuries from trampolines are also one of those top injuries that um, we see all the time. So advice for protecting children um, from these type of injuries on trampolines? People yes. getting out there, jumping up and down and stuff. Yeah, trampolines can certainly be great fun, but uh, taking care when when you're doing that activity, the, you know, having one one child jump at a time so that they're not bouncing each other around and bouncing each other off. Um, one person is just able to be much better in control. Um, for home trampolines, having the net around the outside prevents prevents kids from getting bounced off and hurt from hurt from that. And then certainly just being mindful of what um, what type of tricks and jumps uh, what types of tricks and jumps kids are doing. Certainly things that are higher risk are things like flips or uh, flips or somersaults, things like that. Good, good advice there. So, and I think people might be surprised of that, but more than 80,000 people a year end up seeking emergency care from injuries due to lawnmower injuries. What are you seeing in the urgency room? So one of the most frequent things that we see is actually eye complaints or eye injuries after either mowing the lawn or using a weed whipper. Um, so, you know, certainly clearing the area and can, can take a walk through your yard before you start to make sure there's not things that are going to get kicked up by the lawnmower. Um, when you're mowing or wear, or weed, uh, weed whipping, wearing eye protection, um, one of the most frequent things that we see is scratches to the eyes and small foreign bodies in the eyes. Um, and those can actually be quite painful. Um, then they, uh, you can also, once you, once you start you know, injuring and getting things into the eye can result in infection as well. I know a cousin of mine was following too close to um his his dad and actually caught his foot got caught in the lawnmower so very serious yes um, and you know unfortunately we we see and hear about those every year making sure that you're make just being mindful of of where you're at and uh the uh making sure you're wearing good shoes while you're out mowing the lawn uh and you know kids should really be kept away from mm -hmm. lawn mowers and riding lawn mowers uh, we do see, I have seen quite serious injuries to uh, feet and toes from yep. uh, lawnmower blades. Yeah, I think he must have been about six at the time. And I think he did lose a couple of toes as a result. Of yeah. that. So, um, and then I know talking about children ages like five to nine, it's, it's, I think the highest risk for injuries are at the playground. So advice for parents on that to prevent some of these playground injuries. 
So I guess the big, the biggest spot that I would, that I would watch out for is the monkey bars. The monkey bars are so good for kids, you know, learning their, you know, working on their upper body strength and swinging and playing, but just making sure they're doing it safely and that your child is really strong enough to hold on and hold themselves up. If not, then give them a hand, give them a boost or a spot. Um, but uh, it's a long way down. And, you know, we frequently see kids who fall off the monkey bars, fall on that outstretched hand and have either a wrist or a forearm fracture. And that's a real bummer for the rest of the summer when they spend the uh, spend time in a cast. Yep, I, I can attest to that. I think I did something like that when I was like five or something. Very, or something. It's very yeah. common to fall off the monkey bars is probably the, the yeah. most common playground injury that we see. Yeah, I know now when, when my kids were little and now with the grandkids, it's like, I want to spot them, like just be right there and stuff, you know, so they don't have to go with what I went through. So, yep, I, I hear you loud and clear on that. You know, and people are going to be wanting to get those swimming pools open. Advice to prevent some of those unintentional grounding related incidents. So just, you know, even if, even if your child's strong swimmer, making sure that they're, they always have adult supervision, um, teaching your kids to swim is so important. That's, uh, and you give them the skills to be able to get to the side and, uh, but just making sure that you know, good supervision, never swim, ne kids are never swimming alone. Absolutely. And spring is also a time that a lot of us want to get out and clean up around the house and, and in the house. And they, some of the most, I think a lot of the common injuries that you see are from falls and those type of injuries. What um, would you, are you seeing at the urgency room? So falls off ladders are, are common as folks get out to clean out their gutters, wash those higher windows, um, making sure that if you're going to be up on a ladder, you're, you've got it on a good steady spot, um, that you're not up above the, you know, the height the ladder is rated for. Um, if you are in a spot where the ground isn't so even, or, you know, really consider whether that's a safe spot to put the ladder. If you've decided you're going to go up anyway, make sure that there's someone there to help hold the ladder and make sure that, you know, things stay as steady as they can for you. And, you know, finally, I think a lot of people can't wait to get out on the golf course or get out for a run or walk, but that can also lead to some significant injuries. What type of injuries are you seeing? Well, as people restart their, their usual summer and spring activities, we see some overuse injuries where, you know, just soreness and strain sometimes, you know, the shin splints where you suddenly were, uh, you suddenly returned to running quite a few more miles than you did over the winter. Maybe you were doing more, you know, gym and elliptical or biking over the winter and have returned to your summer running habit. Um, so we do see some of these overuse injuries where people get shin splints or IT band trouble. And the best advice there is just, you know, ease back into things slowly. Um, and then work up to your, work up to your summer goals. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm hoping to get back into that routine myself. So good advice there. Any final advice for our viewers on ways to prevent some of these spring type injuries? So I would just say when you're, when you're headed out, I uh, have fun, but be smart too. Wear your protective equipment. Uh, take it a little bit at a time, and make sure you're doing make sure you're doing activities that your body's ready for and strong enough for. If not, get us uh, particularly for kids and playgrounds. Get a spot. Teach them how to do it correctly, um, and just uh, have fun playing in our Minnesota summer. And they can come see you at the at the urgency rooms then as well. Absolutely, we'd be we'd be more than happy to check out any spring or summer injuries. Well, Dr. Trussell, also always a pleasure to have you with us, even if it's virtually like this. So thank you so much for your time. I know you're very busy. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. We have learned that there is a new kind of national health and wellness clinic, which is starting here first in the Twin Cities. Joining us by Zoom to tell us all about it are the founders of The Good Clinic, Michael Howell and Kevin Smith. Welcome, Michael and Kevin. Thank you for being with us and excited to hear all about The Good Clinic. Why don't you tell us beginning, um, what, what is The Good Clinic all about? Well, The Good Clinic is a uh, reimagined model of primary care services that we believe will be a key partner in improving the quality of life for our clients. Uh, you know, obviously we're here as any primary care provider for the 
uh, everyday medical or urgent care needs that arise, but we also focus on integrative preventive care to help minimize the need for sick care visits. And we really, to make this goal a reality, we focus on providing the data, the insight, the time and support needed to really empower our patients to make lifestyle choices that contribute to an overall healthier life for them. Uh, we believe the best person to manage your health is you. And to get this whole process started, the first step is to co-create an individualized wellness plan with our clients based on a full body assessment scan and their individual healthcare goals. Then we establish a regular schedule of follow-up consultations to measure the progress, adjust the plan, and to help them reach these healthcare goals. And to make these consultations convenient, we employ both physical and virtual visits as part of the follow-up. From the standpoint from someone that um, was going to be a, a client or a patient, then um, what, how will it look different to them from that standpoint as a more traditional health clinic? I, I think the, the elements really start with the role that they play in the process. They're an active participant. They're an equal partner. The providers, the nurse practitioners serve, think of them as kind of a uh, wellness coach. They're there to provide the information, the data that's needed, and to give the consultation. But it's really to help the patient understand, the client, to embrace how they can make their health the quality of health that much better. Um, they, it would also see a difference in the time spent. You know, one of the things that we've structured the care on is to spend quality time with the patient, asking questions, having the patient ask us questions, fill in, give them assignments that say, okay, we're gonna work on this goal. You need to do these kinds of things and come back to pre prepared to discuss it and share with the progress that you've made. So it's, a, it's an empowerment, it's an involvement, and it's the amount of time that they're spending with the provider. So you were saying that it would also have traditional, if someone needed some care, to, but it's more preventive, it's more that wellness focus. And, and Kevin, why don't you tell us about some of the services that you'll be providing? Yes, and you know, I think to segue off what, what you're saying is, is that the focus really is on well care, and that's, that's really the, the foundation. Uh, we do provide a full scope of primary care services, and uh, that would include anything from you know, minor illnesses and injuries um, and, and, and that sort of thing. But what we recognized was that there, there are gaps in primary care. One is access. Um, and, and so we think that with uh, employing nurse practitioners as the primary care provider, we have this opportunity to extend services to more individuals. And these preventive services are really at the core of, of what we're doing. Uh, Michael mentioned the full body analysis. So for example, we can do the, all of the routine lab tests that you would get at your annual physical exam, but then we can do this body composition analysis to really help individuals focus on, um, on their individual goals. And it's, it's really about co-creating a care plan for the patient. And, and that's something that we really focus on, a plan of care. So someone comes in with a healthcare need, we want to be there to support them. Individuals are gonna be at different points in, in their healthcare spectrum and their, their own motivation for their own health. So we meet them where they're at, and then we create a plan. And what we think is unique is that that plan is co-created and that it is ongoing. It's, it's not a one stop for your physical per year or every three or five years. It's an ongoing process. Very individualized. And, and when you talk about the body analysis, I mean, what's involved with all of that? You know, we have um, technology where you, where you can um, have, have the patient stand on this body analysis device. 
that does a body composition analysis that um, will do you know, your basic weight and, and BMI, but it goes even further looking at the water composition, the lean body mass, um, the percentage of body fat, uh, the distribution of these, um, the fat and lean muscle mass. And it really helps us to, to target the plan of care for the individual. And that can be anywhere from someone who wants to have modest weight loss goals um, to individuals. Uh, we had someone in who is a, a competitive cross country skier. So someone who wants to maximize their, their health and efficiency and fitness. I can understand that. So this is, you're opening the first um, clinic in the Good Clinic in uh, Minneapolis, and then you hope to expand it to 50 other locations around the country. Is that right? Yes, we will. Uh, we're in the process of expanding within the Twin Cities. So our goal is by the end of this year to have eight of the clinics operating within the Twin Cities. Uh, okay. Later this month, we'll be spending time uh, in Denver, Colorado, looking at the market and identifying the sites. We'll build out Denver uh, later this year and into 2022. And then we have plans for three other uh, initial markets around the country to establish the presence for the brand and then grow out from there, bringing it together to a national uh, presence. So yes, but the goal for the first three years will be to have 50 clinics operating and providing this expanded primary care because primary care is also one of the elements I wanna add is the fact that we are taking a broader definition of primary care. It's not just about the physical body, but we're also talking about entry-level behavioral health. We're talking about uh, the minor cosmetic uh, dermatological services. So it's about feeling good about yourself and having an understanding of the whole system that is part of healthcare quality. If um, an individual wants to get more information or if they want to sign up, how do they go about doing that? Uh, the, the easiest way is to go to the goodclinic.com and it'll explain kind of the concept that we've got and tell you how to uh, schedule your appointment for the next body scan. <laughs> And you really see this as the future of healthcare, don't you? Well, yes, we do, because it is about empowering the patient, the client themselves. It's about um, tearing down the walls that people tell us in our research that they feel that they're not heard when they're with their uh, existing primary care providers. They don't have time to, to really ask the questions, that it's more about solving the immediate problem and not creating this uh, changes in lifestyle and changes in healthcare quality that they're really looking for. So it's, it's really about meeting the client, as Kevin said, where they are today and helping them get to where they wanna be in the future. Well, exciting news to share with our viewers and glad to hear about the Good Clinic and looking forward to hear more about it in the future here. So thank you both for being with us and taking time to be with us. Thank you, Jody. We've appreciated the time. I got some Oxy after I hurt my neck. First, I took them to feel better. Then, I just kept taking them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. Since January 2005, we have been bringing you the very latest in health and medical news on Inside Healthcare. And throughout this year, we thought we would take a look back at our most memorable shows and interviews, like this next one from 2010, where we were the first to tell you about a landmark U.S. surgery here in Minnesota. And you hear why one local mom called it a medical miracle. Her right femur is 47 centimeters in length, and her left femur is 42 centimeters in length. In addition to the short femur, she's got a deformity of the femur, so it's grown crooked. And the tibia has grown crooked in the opposite direction. This growth plate of her lower femur is arrested completely. It's stopped growing. When 
I come home after my basketball games, I can barely walk anymore. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to straighten your tibia bone. And the way we do that is we make a small incision. We take a little shim of bone out like that. And then we correct that deformity. So when surgery is done on Thursday, your bone will be completely straight. Then we insert the rod inside the bone. And once the rod is locked in place and the bone is cut, we wait four days. And then the stimulator starts. You, t you do that three times a day. And as you do that, your bone grows and grows and grows and grows a millimeter a day. And it keeps growing a millimeter a day. And then your body grows new bone in here. It's hard when you see your little girl come home and be in pain and, you know, things that didn't, in you know, surgery before didn't go right. So Dr. Dahl has given us the hope to fix all this. So for me, it's incredible. At the end of the day, my lower back's always sore because I walk with a kind of a tilt you know, because my left leg's five centimeters shorter. I think we're really lucky, really, really lucky, and it's just going to be nice to have his leg the same length and get rid of the back and knee trouble. It's very powerful. Uh, this implant has a diameter, or let's say, of less than my finger and has a power of about 2,000 newtons. That is more than double of your body weight. And uh, this, it has a technique that it's very good to control. Uh, the energy source is outside of the body and it's coupled inside the body via a transmission system. So it's very safe. And um, I think it's, uh, the, the effect, it's very effective. We were pretty nervous, but we had a lot of confidence in Dr. Gall. We knew that she was in good hands and the doctor from Germany and, you know, so, I mean, we had, we had no doubts. It was just letting your little girl go into surgery for six and a half hours while you're sitting in a waiting room. It was a tough day, but it was worth it. He showed us, you know, what Danny's leg had looked like before and what it looked like after the surgery, and he said to us, it's absolutely perfect. And it was the most incredible moment of my life because Danny was going to be okay. The operation was perfect, and the surgery was, everything was, was very good, and the equipment, a good team here. So it was for me also a great pleasure to be here. He said, well, thanks for coming to the surgeons. And he, he was just a pretty happy young man at that point. I, I think he was um, still pretty numb from the surgery and um, just happy to have it done and that he also knew it was really successful. <laughs> When you lengthen it, it, you can't really feel it. Like for me, I could hear it without the stethoscope we use. I could hear it and then the vibrations, I can feel them that like go up to the middle like of my chest or whatever. So, but it doesn't really feel like you're stretching it. You lengthen the bone, but uh, in addition, you lengthen all the soft tissue which is around. You lengthen the nerves, the vessels, the muscles, everything is lengthened. And that could create problems, for example, nerve problems or create uh, contractures of the joints. So you have to control it very carefully. Every week you see more and more bone and uh, the density of the bone is better. Today the leg is straight and has the same length at the other side. Best day of my life. Yeah, best day of my life. It was unbelievable what he had done. It was just, wow, incredible. I get excited knowing that it's almost over. All we have to do is wait for the bone to fill in. We're very excited to have with us Alex Braun and his mama Andrea and also Dr. Mark Dahl. 
orthopedic surgeon with St. Croix Orthopedics in, um, in the area, from the area. So thank you all for being with us, really appreciate it. So Alex, how are you doing? That we, um, you had your surgery, it looked like um, several months ago now. Yep, in December I had surgery. Um, I'm doing fantastic. I just got off of crutches about a week ago. I know, I wish our viewers could see you walking. It's just amazing yeah, to see you walking. It feels incredible to walk in after eight months. Um, I got out golfing for the first time this season. Uh, it's just nice to kind of yeah. be getting my life back. And how was it on the golf course? I think where you talked about it was, it was difficult, but it was great. Uh, instead of taking the cart to my ball, I'd always say, "All right, I'm going to walk to my ball on this next shot," because just being able to walk again was wow. incredible. And they're exactly the same length now, or yeah. very close now. Yep. So, and the problems that you were having before, you don't have anymore. Not at all. When I walk, my back doesn't hurt anymore. Wow, just amazing. Andrew, how was it for you as you're watching your son going through this? And it, and it looks like you had to actually help stimulate that, worked on it. Right, Learn right. things that you hadn't done before. Right. Um, it, I think you referred to the fit bone as a medical miracle. And it has been a med medical miracle for our family. Um, prior to the surgery, I was really excited that Alex was going to be one of the first in the country and I was also anxious at times. And, but I focused on the end goal, which he ended up getting, two legs the same length. Um, the, we had the surgery at Woodwinds and they did a great job with pain management and alternative therapies. He had acupuncture, um, aromatherapy, healing touch. And when we took him home, it was a very busy first five to six weeks because we lengthened his leg three times a day and, and that continued for several months but the in the beginning it was difficult because we had to unwrap his leg and take care because the movement hurt his leg um, lengthen it rewrap it uh, I did a lot of healing touch woodwinds had taught me that and we did aromatherapy and we got through it. I think Alex doesn't remember the first month so much. He, really? he was much. on pain meds. And, um, that was probably a good thing. And then the pain subsided and he started slowly to get his life back. And I think you had mentioned one other time previously to me that the healing touch actually would put Alex to sleep. It was so calming and soothing and do away with the pain and stuff. I don't remember it, but she said <laughs> that when I was in the hospital, they came in to do acupuncture, and um, there's pictures of me sleeping while they're doing it. I don't remember having it at all. So obviously right. it was very healing and, yeah, and relaxing. for you. Now Danny said she couldn't really feel much, just kind of a vibration. How about from your perspective? Yeah, I could feel it in my neck. I could feel a dull humming, but I couldn't feel anything in my leg. It didn't hurt at all when I lengthened it. Isn't it just amazing when it's you think incredible. back about it? It's incredible. How far you've come. And Dr. Dahl, since then you've done some other cases as well. They were a couple of your first ones. We have. We've done several more cases and <clears throat> we continue to select the patients very carefully for this. Um, I think you need to understand that perspective on this is that the fit bone surgery is, is a completely implantable lengthening device, whereas opposed to the traditional lengthening is done with an external fixator. If you had to do it over again, would you? And in what do you what do you tell other people in a heartbeat? Yeah. No hesitation there at all. Um, it was a lot less painful than I thought it would be, and from <laughs> what I hear, it's a lot less painful than a, a external fixator. So, if you have a choice between the two, definitely go with a fit bone. And I know it's not an everyday surgery, but um, it was a great thing, and I'm glad I did it because I'm going to have almost a normal life now. Uh, I'll be able to walk and play basketball without having any pain in my back anymore. And trying to work on that golf, yeah. that golf game as well? Trying to improve it a little bit. And mom, what do you think? I think Alex gave up some months of his life to heal and to commit himself to this. And in exchange, Dr. Dahl gave him a new life, a normal good life that where his back and knee and hip won't be bothering him. So thank you, Dr. Dahl. That is our program for you. Join us again next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.